When you're working with this batch group object in build mode, as I've mentioned before, when you select the first time, you're selecting the entire batch group object. When you select the second time, you're going to select the individual objects within that batch group object. So for example, I can pick this trend up now and move it. Now also about these different objects, when you need to have them aligned, what you'll notice is as you draw them closer together so that they come close to being aligned, you'll see these little markers above and below the objects. That indicates when you do get those alignment sim symbols to appear, that means that when you let go of the mouse, it will align properly. Let's look now at the query that's requested in this exercise. But we'd like to change the query so that we're looking just for Digester 1. We're going to look for any of uh, any uh, batch records that have been active within the last hour, which isn't really a change from what we saw before. But this time we're going to look for only those batches that are shorter than 10 minutes. And we're also going to apply a filter. The filter is going to be looking for this alias name, pressure. We're looking for pressures greater than 3,000 for a period uh, greater than 45% of the time. Now we came up with this pressure object because this is one of the aliases that is associated with the unit that we're working with, digest the digesters. They both digesters have a pressure alias, so we can make use of that alias in this filter. So here's how we'll proceed. I'll go into run mode. Now this is going to be something that we do just in run mode. It won't affect the, um, the actual configuration of this batch group object. That configuration is going to remain stored as it is now. So we're not, uh, we're, we're not making permanent changes here. So within the unit name, I'm simply going to add a 1, indicating we only want digester 1. Now, we're looking for all batches in the last hour, so this can stay the way it is. We're looking for all active batches. And what that means is any batch that was active within the last hour. So you may get a batch that started longer than an hour ago, just as long as it was active within the last hour. Now, under duration, we're going to choose something or only batches that are shorter than 10 minutes. You'll get a drop down here that you can modify. So for example, I can choose one minute and chain, change that to 10 minutes. And then finally, in the filter expression, this is where we would put the names of our aliases along with any expressions. So in this case, I'm going to use pressure. That's the name of the alias in here. And we'll say it's been greater than 3,000. The syntax we're using here is our typical performance equation syntax. Now this field down here called for period gives us control over uh, what, um, what matching criteria in terms of time we need to make for this filter to become true. So in this case we're saying for a period that's greater than 45% of the time. You can also use ab or absolute numbers there for greater than 10 minutes, for example, or percentages. I'm using percentage in this case. And we can, of course, uh, specify between 45 and 75 percent, or at any time it was greater than, etc. So with these uh, configurations here, what we should end up with is some much uh, smaller, a much more restricted set of search results. Right now we're getting um, many different results here as you can see. And if I go ahead and choose search now, what we're getting is just those results that match this criteria. And of course, if I were to switch this around to a different digester, we would see different results uh, yet again. Yeah, there we go. Now, as I mentioned before, the changes that we made here, these are just changes in run mode. So we're not changing the fundamental definition. In fact, if you go into build mode and you double click on this object, you'll see that all the original criteria are still there. And of course what that means is if you do update this, you'll notice this comes back with all the normal criteria without those that extra filter, etc. Well the next part of this exercise is to do a very similar thing using PyDataLink. So I'll start that exercise by closing out a copy of this process book and opening up a copy of Excel.
Of course, Excel you should be able to find in the Start menu. I'll find it under All Programs, Microsoft Office, and Microsoft Office Excel. Here's a copy of Excel 2007. If you haven't seen it before, Data Link appears uh, now in the ribbon within Office 2007. So a lot of these things you may have seen before in Data Link are going to show up in a slightly different look and feel with Office 2007. Now under Add-ins, this is where we find the Batch View Add-in under Pi Menu. Now if this add-in does not appear on your machine, either you're not licensed for it, of course, or you may simply not have a reference to that add-in. So if you go into the Windows option under Excel Options, or excuse me, that's the Office button under Excel Options, choose Add-ins, and then you can click on this Go button and go out and browse for the add-ins that you might need for this. In this case, we're using this Pi Batch View for Excel. Of course, in the Learning Lab environment, that's already configured. But if you needed to find this back home, you would just browse and you would find it where you've installed this Batch View client, which would be under Program Files, PyPC, Batch, and you'll find these uh, two different uh, add-ins. And you'll notice that there are two different add-ins listed there. Uh, this is the older uh, Batch View add-in version 2.x. This is the newer one. Both of them do ship with the same copy of Batch View, and when making use of them, what you'll notice is the well, the uh, the newer one actually invokes two or supports two different add-ins that appear in your this uh, Batch View or in this list of add-ins here. So, adding the newer one is going to re result in the Batch View for Excel and this PyBV Excel functions. You don't need to load that older uh, PyBat32.xla add-in, but if you've got older spreadsheets that make use of it, that's what you would use in order to have those continue to work. Now, in any, any event, I should be able to see that we do have a batch search that's available, and this is what we're going to be using uh, to search for batches and then end up showing results in the spreadsheet. Now, the place to start is to open up a template that already has a lot of the configurations done for you except for the batch elements. So I'm going to go into the labs directory and within labs you'll find a template. This is in section 2 under using batch view under the template directory. Now this, uh, this right here doesn't solve everything. It just solves the problem of having to put all these little you know whiz-bang little callouts and whatnot, these parameters, and these drop-down lists, etc. All these things are already done for you. So what we'd like to do is give you a head start with this so that you can concentrate on the important things, which are just the batch view stuff. This other stuff, uh, like being able to choose drop-downs, those are just, of course, Excel skills, so we're not really going to go into the detail on how to configure any of these things here. It's just essentially window dressing to make the report look prettier and be a little bit easier for people to make use of. Well, so what uh, what am I going to ask you to do in this uh, this particular exercise? Well, I'm going to ask you to retrieve some batch results using this batch view add-in, Pi batch view search here. So we're going to put these results on cell A12. As you can see, it is a bit of a setup here because you know the the uh, rest of this, the uh, all the different calculations are already set up for you. But uh, again, since those have little to do with batch, we're not really concerned about that.